And it was very important. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. But that's not the issue at the moment. The issue is a law, not climate change. This is the time for climate. Climate change time will come. But shelve that climate change matter. Even the refugees were among those that were demonstrating. Because the refugees, they ran from countries, from places where they met leaders like some. They said, no, we don't want to be a part of that system. And they were there demonstrating. Glory to God. When men keep quiet, evil prevails. And that's why, you know, if you are walking into a place, maybe you are vaxxed. Ah, I told you vaxxed or anti-vax is not an issue. It doesn't stop you from serving God. But it's just that a man of God gave a warning at the time to tell you what Satan is planning, to show you what Satan has ahead. Now, if you're vaxxed and you are about walking into a shopping mall and you find that somebody who is not is being told, stay out of the door, Brother, sister, you should know that that's not the place for you to be. Doesn't matter what you're going to buy in there. Doesn't matter what you're going to buy. Might be the only place in town where you can get that cloth. You can say, that cloth, I don't need it. If this place is a place where appetite, or whatever they call it, see, medical appetite, medical appetite is being practiced. If this, because, you know, what you, are, what you are going into that store to pay for is going to generate profit for them. And that profit is going to be used to perpetrate more of what they are doing. So in other words, your finances you are spending there is a vote in support of what they are doing. So you say, no, I refuse to be a part of it. Hallelujah. I refuse to be a part. You step out of it. You say, no, I, I, mm, I won't do my shopping here. Thank you. I'm grateful. Better for me to stay away than for me to do my shopping here. Remember, the Lord identified with those who were downtrodden. The Lord identified with those who were oppressed. He identified with those who were to be killed. What they expected was more than a pandemic and a pandemic. There was, there was something I remember Pastor showed us then about a zombie pandemic. A zombie apocalypse, exactly. Where some set of zombies, <laughs> glory to God. Now, I didn't come to church for conspiracy theory, hallelujah. But you see, the word of God helps you. I didn't say that that was a zombie, that that was a conspiracy theory. I didn't say so. I just said, I'm not in church for that. Glory to God. But it's so important for you to be wise at this. There are many interesting things that are happening around us that show you that we are close to the end of time. So many things are happening. Just, uh, was it a day or two ago, we heard about lunar eclipse, right? Okay, because some of you were busy snoring and the rest, so you never heard about that. But that happened. It's in the word of God. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's one of the signs of the end times. And another one is being expected that's even more because they said this one was a partial lunar eclipse. Okay. There's another one they are expecting in November 2022 that will be a full lunar e eclipse. Right? But these things just show you that we are closer and closer to the end of time. And now Australia predicts that probably within the next five, six years, they will have a war with a nation that has two million, two million soldiers. I don't want to mention the name of the nation, but you know. Two million. And how many soldiers do Australia have? Just a few tens of thousands. All right? And they are expecting to have some conflict. So... I told you, was it sometime last month? I said, for the first time in a long while, I discussed it with another pastor too in a network here in Australia. For the first time, they started thinking about making serving in the military in Australia to be compulsory. So in other words, whether you like it or not, you will go and fight and carry a gun. 
I wonder how you look like carrying a, a bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then some of you will need Jesus more than ever before. You know? <laughs> you know? But those are discussions that are ongoing. I'm not telling you fibs. I'm not telling you fibs. I'm telling you exactly what I know. Those are discussions that are ongoing. Same way they snipe, they, they put in quickly laws concerning uh, emergency powers. Nobody knew about it. That's how they can look for a way, legal way to put something in place somehow very fast so that nobody knows about it and just, you know, just sneak it in. And then by the appropriate time, they say every citizen, every permanent resident, it is now from this day mandatory. And you'd be surprised. The man who's telling you freedom, 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 who's just looking for votes will be the same one. That will tell you the same way he said every church shut down, even though he's a Christian, will be the same one. And the same way he said everybody go and vax, and then suddenly he's now he's changed his mouth and said, No, 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 no. It's not compulsory. You know the laws in Australia. Say, oh. They know how to double speak. Trust God. Only God and His word can you trust. Put your trust not in any man. Tell anybody, don't trust any man. Trust only God. Only God you can trust. Only God. Men will double speak. Say this one, and after a while they say something different. But only God can we put our trust in. And that's why at this time, study God's word more than ever before. Time you spend watching, you know, because why did they allow all these movie stars free movement from country to country? Why people were on lockdown? Movie stars were not on lockdown. They were flying private jets around the whole place. In fact, those that put nations on lockdown were even paying their bills for them to come and do different things so that they can create nice movies for you to be watching. So you sit down in your house, you are on lockdown. You'll be watching the movie stars. While those who are planning things will be busy planning things in their offices. As a means of distraction. Brothers and sisters, don't be distracted. That's why our man of God said this month is our month to watch to be vigilant and to pray. To be vigilant. To walk wisely. When someone says one thing, interpret it very well. Even when sometimes they might tell you, hey, no, it's conspiracy theory. A lot of the things they said are conspiracy theory have long been proven to be true. Yes. A lot of those things that were censored as false. Suddenly, when it's time, when it's no longer a challenge unto them, they show it as true. They allow it because they see it's actually true. That's why also, do not base your source of information alone on the media. The media have their own objectives. And remember, they are getting money. Where are they getting the money from? So be wise. Be vigilant. Watch. And then do what? Pray. Pray. As God shows you things, pray concerning them. And brethren in the house, encourage each other. Doesn't matter what you know about another person. Doesn't matter what you know about this sister or this brother or this man or this woman, whatever. Encourage each other. Support each other. Glory to God. We are in an army together. Hallelujah. Must watch and pray. We are on the same team. Doesn't matter what you have done to yourself. We are on the same team. Glory to God. We are on the same team. When we get to heaven, I will see you there. Glory to God. Amen. Tell someone around you, you will not miss the rapture. <laughs> you won't miss it. Keep your eyes on Jesus all the time. Two, four, seven. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Block your ears from the, from the, the accusations of the adversary. Sometimes Satan will accuse you because of this and this and this. Don't go to church ever again. Sit at home because of this and this and this. Don't think Sit at home because of this and this and this and this. Ah, ah, Pastor Tony. Ah, mm, 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 don't listen. Ah, this one. Although the accuser of the brethren mm -hmm. is trying to render your spiritual life to become dead so that you will not know when the rapture even takes place. I will never miss the rapture. Hallelujah. Never miss the rapture. Luke chapter 21 from verse 25. Interesting things that are happening. Luke chapter 21, 
Take you to verse 25. Bible says, and there shall be signs in the sun <laughs> and in the moon, such as they saw. And in the stars too, those ones are coming. And upon the earth there shall be distress of nations. Nations shall be in distress. Includes financial distress, health distress, all types. With perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. So climate change is not news. Men's heart failing them for fear. From 2020 to 2021, that's what you've been seeing. Men's hearts failing for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Because they can see there's trouble ahead. For the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Verse 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man. This one is coming very soon. Hallelujah. Tell someone Jesus is coming. <laughs> then shall they see the, man, the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. All the signs are announcing the coming of Jesus. Many can't see it, but we know we are vigilant. We know that Jesus is coming soon. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Verse 29, he spake to them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves. That summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye the kingdom of God is at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. 33, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words, I told you, stay on the word of God. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any times your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness. They shut down churches, but the liquor stores were opened. Drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you on our ways. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Coming of the Son of Man shall be a surprise. To a lot of those who come on the earth. But it shall not be a surprise unto us. Because we are waiting and we are watching. Hallelujah. Verse 36. Jesus said, watch ye therefore and pray always. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. The trouble that will come to the world. That you shall escape all of them. That shall come to pass. And yet. To stand before the son of man. Glory to God. Lift up your hands. Say, I'll stand before the Son of Man. Stand the Son of Glory to God. So it's very important to watch and to pray. Jesus told us he's coming and yes, he is. Also in this season, I want you to note, you can write this down for yourself. Simple thing. In this season, let nothing stop your joy. Amen. Let nothing stop your joy. Nothing should stop your joy. No, that's what they want. That's what they want. So don't go into the stores. Don't walk. No job, no work. No job, no money. All sorts of things just to stop your joy. Because Satan knows if he, can, if he can stop your joy, then he can render your life to be upside down. But remember, your joy does not come Based on your physical circumstances, your joy comes from within. Amen. That's why the Bible calls it the joy of the Holy Ghost. It comes from inside you. So let nothing stop your joy. Let nothing stop your joy. He knows if he can stop your joy in your home, he will wreck your marriage. He wreck your marriage. So now, husband and wife can no longer smile and tease themselves. You know? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> It's important. You need to tease yourself sometimes. Yeah, this man, you, know, you have a big stomach now. When I knew you, you had your stomach was flat. Now yours is uh, glory to God. I'm just talking. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this woman. When I knew you, you were like this. I, 
Now, since I just knew that, see, I just pump up, pump up, pump up, pump up, you know? Tease each other, you know? Ah, since I knew you, never knew you used to speak in other tongues. Now you are just a tongue talker. It's good that you have been receiving my fire as a wife. <laughs> and then you don't grow offended. You laugh over it. Glory to God. You laugh over it, you know? Or sometimes, you know, the lady might be dressing so nicely like sweet sister. I say, yes, so I know you are looking like sweet sister for me, but, you know, you have already given birth to five. So you are after five, five o'clock, you know? <laughs> no, oh, after two, thank you. <laughs> you know, all right? I didn't want to say three, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I can protect my marriage. <laughs> you know? But sometimes it's good to, to tease each other, you know, to have fun, to enjoy your marriage, enjoy your friends, you know? Enjoy your friends too. Don't let anything take joy out of your cell. If you are a cell leader, don't let anything take joy out of your cell. Or a fellowship coordinator or a departmental director that every time you guys meet everybody serious. Mm, mm, mm. As if Satan has just all of you are on attention. Bah, looking for an opportunity to fight. No. In the presence of God, there is what? Fullness of joy. Joy. I love to enjoy my life. Hallelujah. Know me very well. No matter what happens, sometimes I'll just sit there inside my office and I'll just be laughing. <laughs> if I have nothing to laugh about, I'll put something on that will make me to laugh. You know? I always have something to laugh. Sometimes the sort of thing that will make somebody to frown is what will make me lock my door and start laughing inside. Because I understand that I got the joy of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when your heart is always laughing that way, you have medicine flowing all through your body. Because laughter is like medicine. To flow through your whole body, everything about you will just be complete, nice and fine. Instead for your brain cells to become concentrated, you know, because of plenty of anger and frowning, everything will just open up nicely. You just see, everything just be flowing at the right rate. And anything that wanted to be out of place will just be repaired within your system. Joy. John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus said, in the world you shall have what? Tribulations. <laughs> These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Then he said, in the world ye shall have tribulation. But what is your response to tribulation? He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Be cheerful. Be joyful. Joyful, I have overcome the world. So there will be tribulation. But I want you to respond with joy. I want you to respond with cheer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, from number 11. The Bible says, They're blessed are ye when men shall revile you. And they shall persecute you. One, somebody said, oh, you know, I've been, I've been so persecuted because I've been listening to Pastor Chris. It's Pastor Chris that said this thing, no. That's why I'm doing it. But now, see now, I've been so persecuted. My working place, I was so persecuted. Uh -huh. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, he didn't say, <laughs> go and cry when you are persecuted. He said, no, you are blessed. When men shall revile you, in other words, they shall hate you, and they shall persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Amen. They know you are not an anti-vaxxer, but you said, uh-uh. Anything that is a prototype of the mark of the beast, mm -mm, I won't be a part of it. And so what do they say? Anti-vaxxer! In fact, you are the one spreading COVID all around this corridor. Everybody that has ever had COVID, you are the source. Persecute you. Just because you are being careful and cautious. The Lord said, you are blessed. Glory to God. Tell someone around you, you are blessed. He said, blessed are you. Verse 12. He said, when you find yourself in that situation, what do you do? Rejoice. Amen. These are the words of Jesus. I'm not talking my, I didn't write the Bible. I found it the same way you found it. He said, rejoice and be exceeding glad. 
For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted, he's telling you, you are not the first. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. You know, sometimes some people say, Pastor Tony, these things you just say, can you close this chapter and let us just hear the word of God? Well, this is how Isaiah was talking. Yes. Jeremiah, this is how they talked. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yes. This is how they talked. Ezekiel, Ezekiel thank you. Ezekiel. All those big, big names. Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Adol, they are all my names. <laughs> 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 but I'm not answering John the Baptist, okay? Because <laughs> Herod is the parliament house. <laughs> but this is how they all talked, you know? And they were persecuted. Even if Jesus were to be here now, he would still to physically here. He would be persecuted. He would be persecuted. Remember, those who didn't like Jesus were not the common people on the streets. In fact, it was the very church leaders, the Pharisees, the, those that read the law, that knew the Torah. Yes, they were the ones that hated Jesus. The Bible says they hated him without a cause. They were the ones that hated Jesus. The leader of the church, the chief priests, they were the ones that hated, they hated him. That they, they just hated him. Ah, they hated him. They hated him for refusing that that woman should be stoned. They hated him for it. They hated him for healing people on the Sabbath day. They hated him for teaching people about love. They hated him for having women as members of his discipleship, going with him from place to place. Why should you have women? Should only be men. They hated him for different things. They hated him without a cause. But you know what Jesus says? Rejoice. Hallelujah. If men hate you for any reason, just rejoice. Because the love of God supersedes the hatred of any man. Put them all together. God's love is more. Rejoice and be glad. Very words of Jesus. Show you some more. James chapter 1. See if you can give this to me in the Passion Translation. From verse 2. James chapter 1 from verse 2. Sometimes we are doing things as we are doing as pastors or as leaders that you are or as a Christian that you are. And it's like, ah, why is it, why is it that since I, 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 I've been telling people about the gospel, now my family members, they don't like me again. Eh? My father said, my mother said, or my brother said, or my sister said, doesn't matter. In fact, that's when you go and rejoice and celebrate. Celebrate. Doesn't matter whether your father was your source. If your father refuses to continue, oh, bahaya. if your father refuses to continue being a source, as God has appointed him to be. Never mind. Because that does not mean that your substance will be cut off. It only means that God will pass through another channel to get what he has ordained for you to be yours. And oftentimes what that means is that what God was passing to your father because of you will automatically be taken away. Because he needs to say, he was giving it to, the, giving it to him because of you. So if he says, no, I will no longer discharge, God, will, God is wise. He knows how to deal with all that. He'll just cut off that and move on and pass it to someone else so as to get to you. And then after a while, the old man, be, <laughs> the old man begins to tell you, you know, you are no longer supporting the family. Uh, you are no longer supporting, you are no longer supporting, uh, we need more support. And at that time, don't, don't, your hand and close your hand. No, begin to release glory to God. Because remember, God is blessing you so that you can bless others. So you also release. Even if it's $10, even if it's only $10 that you have, send the $10 to him. Glory to God. I hope I'm talking to somebody here today. Yeah, don't, miss, don't treat people badly because someone else treated you badly. And don't repay evil with evil. Repay evil with good. So if a parent treated you badly, no problem. It's okay. It's okay. In fact, as you are repaying that evil with good, the Bible tells us actually that what you are doing 
is that if that man willfully did that thing wrong or that woman willfully did that thing wrong, you are actually heaping coals of fire on that person's head. That's what the Bible says. But that's not today's discussion. James chapter 1 verse 2. So always do good. Passion translation. My fellow believers, <clears throat> when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, like some brethren in different parts of the world are right now, facing nothing but difficulties from 2020 now, difficulty, difficulty, from lockdown to lockdown to this one, to vaccine, to loss of job, to this one, to this one, to that one. Ah, ah. Nothing but difficulties. He says, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. Glory to God. Can you say with me, I can endure. <laughs> I can endure hardship. Yes, I can endure hardship. And sometimes people say, ah, but all these pastors that say endure hardship, but they are wearing nice suits. When we pull the suit, you will understand. <laughs> when we pull the suit, <laughs> we wear the suit so that we can, because we are salesmen, it's our uniform. All right? But there are times there is no suit. In fact, by Lege <laughs> 6 a.m. this morning, I was in tongues in my office. And the Lord walked into the office. And I was in tongues. There was only one other person in the building and the person was sleeping. Because later on, after, after the Lord spoke, that was when he spoke that, those words to me. And then I dispatched them and I'm sure many of you received the text message. He spoke that to me. He also said a few other things. And then I sent that to you. And after that, I looked at the, the whole thing and I said, oh, wow, I'm still the only person in this building. Because I looked around, I wanted to check, were there any other angels that landed in the place that I was checking? Because I know I heard the sound. I heard the sound of the back door open. I heard, I heard, it was as if there were footsteps in the whole place. And then in came the Lord. And I was like, wow, Karo Shagabaya. And there was something very specifically, but he said something else specifically to me. And I'll never forget what he said to me for the rest of my life. Someday I'll tell you what he told me this morning. But when he spoke to me, I was so encouraged. And then he said, tell my people that. That's when I sent that word to you. Everything is aligned. Amen. Everything is perfected Amen. by the power of the Holy Ghost. Those were not my words. I didn't manufacture them. Glory to God. Endure all things. The Lord expects you to endure. Now what has happened from 2020 till now is a test of your ability to endure. How much can you take? How much can you take for Jesus? Can you stand for Jesus? Can you say, Lord, my life belongs to you? It tests. And doesn't matter your performance in the test doesn't matter. Remember something. I said something some weeks back. I said, look, Peter denied Jesus. There's a difference between Peter and Judas. Both of them did wrong things. Judas sold Jesus for some money. That was very bad. But actually, the money he sold, he, what he sold Jesus for was to make some money for the treasury. And so that they can have money to do some things for the poor. And he can steal some and use some to buy land for himself. Because that was what he was doing. Okay? Bible tells, Jesus said he, said he was a thief and he had the bag. The very words of Jesus. And yet he gave him the bag to carry. Okay? So Jesus knew that this guy was into those stuff. Okay? But he did something bad. He sold. And when he was selling Jesus, he didn't expect that Jesus was going to be killed. No, 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 a thousand times no. As far as Judas was concerned, historical books tell us that Judas was one of the zealots. And so he came, he haven't watched Jesus heal the sick, heal the lepers, raise the dead, do all this stuff. He knew 
that Jesus was the Messiah that they were waiting for. And the Messiah, as according to his own knowledge, was not meant to come and be, die and be killed. The Messiah was going to show himself and lead the children of Israel into Jerusalem to go and take over from the Romans. That was what Judas was expecting. So he just wanted to make some nice money out of the deal. And then by the time they came to arrest Jesus, suddenly Jesus would just change. Bang, bang, I am the Messiah. <laughs> and then all the angels would just stand by the side. And then the apostles would stand by Jesus and the angels, the other side, all of them draw out their swords. And then lo and behold, they'll just march straight to Jerusalem. Then they'll tell uh, Pontius Pilate, Pilate, get out of here, we have arrived. That was what he was expecting. So it was a surprise to him that Jesus was just arrested just like that. He was, he was shocked. And then even while he was arrested, he was still waiting. Okay. When Jesus gets there, he will free himself. He never expected until he now discovered what they nailed him to the cross. Jesus died. The Lord died. The Messiah died. What did he do? His response. He went and hung himself. He judged himself. Peter denied the Lord. The Lord told him, you will deny, before the, crock, the cock has crowed two times, you have already, you know me not, three times. He denied the Lord. And then what happened? Exactly what, when, when Jesus told him, this is what you would do. He said, Lord, me, mm, never. It will never happen. Ah, mm, never. I won't accept it. I will, I reject it. You know, some, someone might tell you, you know, it, glory to God. Just all be watchful and prayerful. Be watchful, and prayerful. Be watchful and prayerful. You know, as Christians, you know, some of you might be, be you might say, I, I will never take the mark of the beast. I will never, never take the mark of the beast. Doesn't matter what. I will not miss the rapture. Until someone by your side has been shot. Boom! They say, it's your turn. Are you going to take... Are you ready for the mark or you are not ready for the mark? Then you see some people that say, I love you, Lord. They say, mm. Father God, you know, you understand. You are the one that kept me here on this earth. 